Are you experiencing all sorts of mixed signals in a relationship with an avoidant attachment style? Maybe some days they really invest and show up, and other days they seem to go missing for potentially days at a time. Well, if this is something that you're going through and you want to make sense of and also be able to change or transform some of this dynamic within your relationships, we are going to cover all of this right here today. In today's video, we're going to be talking in particular about why the avoidant attachment style breadcrumbs. And if you stick around to the end, we'll go through an exercise together for exactly what you can do to stop this pattern and put an end to it once and for all. Now, if you're new to this channel, my name is Thais. I'm really happy you're here. Welcome. I put pretty much daily videos out here all about attachment styles, the subconscious mind, psychology, and really how we can heal and transform to build the best relationships of our life. So a dismissive avoidant attachment style, if you're not already familiar, is essentially one of four attachment styles. Everybody has them. And it's an emotional pattern that's characterized by a person's tendencies to avoid emotional closeness and really diminish the importance of close relationships as a means for self-protection. In other words, this person who is an avoidant attachment style grows up feeling like a lot of closeness doesn't go well, and they instead get conditioned to fear it. Generally, the roots of this are childhood emotional neglect, where if you grew up in a household where your emotional needs are not met, it scares you to try to really bond in an emotional way as an adult. So how is this related to breadcrumbing? Well, breadcrumbing, if you weren't already familiar with the definition, is the practice of sporadically feigning interest in another person to keep them interested despite a true lack of investment in the relationship. So in other words, you're having somebody go through an experience of sort of showing interest in a relationship, but doing it from a place that's, first of all, so intermittent. And second of all, it's often from a place where the person themselves is not fully invested. So they're trying to maintain this connection or build a connection of some kind without really showing up to invest in it themselves. I think a really important question we have to ask before we go through some signs of breadcrumbing, and you can actually score yourself on some of these signs and see how they show up for you, are also the reasons that avoidance breadcrumb. And then, of course, we'll get into the exercise of what you can do at the end. So is breadcrumbing always intentional? The answer is no. Sometimes people breadcrumb other people because they're not sure about their own feelings. And this does ring true for the avoidant attachment style. They do tend to be individuals who sometimes do show up and invest. And part of it can be because they think they're interested and yet they're not willing to be vulnerable. And they don't know that difference. They don't realize that I can feel something. I can be attracted. But if I'm not going to be vulnerable, it is going to basically pump the brakes on the relationship dynamic, whether I'm aware of it or not. So we get into this dynamic where breadcrumbing may not be intentional, but it doesn't mean that it's not difficult or harmful for somebody on the receiving end. Now, some big signs of breadcrumbing are number one, intermittent reinforcement. What I mean by this is it'll be like the person is there to reinforce and show up for you, but in very intermittent and sporadic ways. So for example, you may see that the person's really talking to you all week, one week, and then goes missing for three or four days at a time, and then resurfaces for a few days and then goes missing again. And there's this very sporadic, inconsistent dynamic. Now, interestingly enough, there's a lot of research on intermittent reinforcement enforcement that demonstrates it actually has an addictive quality where we can get into a position where we yearn for something because it comes in so sporadically. And it's actually a part of what gamblers get addicted to. It's the intermittent reinforcement of the reward. Now, other signs of breadcrumbing include things like showing interest when you seem to pull away or when you sort of take a step back or even threaten to take a, a leave from the relationship in some form. Also initiating small forms of connection without actually following all the way through. So maybe making plans, but never really showing up or making plans and then showing up every once in a blue moon. And we'll also see other signs of inter intermittent reinforcement include things like communication uh, being present, but without much investment. So things like, you know, maybe messaging back and forth, but not ever jumping on the phone or not having a deep conversation. And we'll also see other, two other big signs are inconsistency and shallow conversation as a whole, not really getting to the depths 
or not really being able to commit or connect to anything in a very vulnerable way. Now, there are, are particular reasons that dismissive avoidance actually breadcrumb. Number one, they're terrified of being vulnerable. You know, at a deep level, they may not feel all this fear, but at a deep level, so much of their personality and all of their coping mechanisms are constructed around not having to feel. So a lot of how they actually structure their lives is around avoiding feeling too much or feeling too deeply. And of course, when we do attach to somebody, vulnerability is inevitable and we can get into a position where it can feel really scary if vulnerability has been a really negative thing in a person's history or past. Number two, avoidant attachment styles don't really know how to co-regulate. What co-regulation is, is each of us in a relationship being able to adjust our behavior to help soothe another person. Now, that doesn't have to be done in a codependent way where we only ever make our behavior about soothing other people, but it's the ability to really look out for ourselves and, and consider ourselves, but also being willing and mindful and available to tweak our behaviors to, to support other people. A really obvious example of this could be maybe you're working, but maybe you see a loved one of yours crying or clearly sad. You may pause what you're doing and go and tend to them and check in with them, give them a hug or some encouraging words. And what you're doing is you're pivoting your behavior to be able to soothe somebody else. Proper co-regulation has both parties doing this with one another. But because dismissive avoidance are scared to be vulnerable and rely on other people, they actually block, block themselves from receiving co-regulation. And they put an end to the cycle of it, leaving them often feeling like they're supposed to show up to other people or for other people, but that people can't show up for them. And it's not that people don't try or aren't able to. It's often that they're actually blocking themselves from receiving receiving because it feels too scary for them to rely on other people. So they're keeping people at arm's length all the time and blocking that actual co-regulation and their ability to rely on or want to be soothed through others. Now, number three reason is we'll often see that a dismissive avoidant attachment style sees that, um, it's protective to, to stay back, right? That it's this subconscious mechanism of like, I don't want to get too close and be let down in the future. So I'm going to keep people at arm's length just so I can maintain the sense of protection in the relationship to myself. And reason number four that I think is important to acknowledge is that there is a possibility that this person just isn't that interested. And in that particular case, if somebody's not that interested, you'd see the difference between an avoidant attachment style versus a disinterested person. An avoidant attachment style, this is their personality. They tend to carry these characteristics and traits um, and these patterns across all relationships, including friendships, family relationships, and of course, their history of romantic relationships. Whereas if somebody's not that interested, it will be particular to the relationship in this one case specifically, and you wouldn't be likely to see that in other cases so much. Now, what do you do if you're actually in this scenario and on the receiving end? Because of course, this can be a very uncomfortable situation to be in. Well, number one, we set a deadline. Sometimes people breadcrumb because they're also not sure if you're interested. It may not be that they're avoidant, but if you can't tell the difference, then you set a deadline and you do what you can within that period of time to communicate your needs. And if the person doesn't show up, you have a clear answer about what to do next, which is to take a big step back and away from the dynamic. But instead, if you do see somebody showing up and making the effort, then we can get out of the cycle of breadcrumbing through healthy communication. So what do we do? Number one, we set a deadline. How long do you actually want to spend trying to see if this can work out? Generally, I recommend a few weeks, maybe one week, two weeks, three weeks, depending on the length of the previous connection. If you've been talking to this person for a few months, you know, you may be at your wit's end and just need an answer. Um, if you've been talking to somebody for a little bit of time and you're just building a connection and they're perhaps moving at a slower pace than you, then you may give that deadline a little bit more time to do your investigation and research about who they are and what they expect. And I don't mean like investigation and research by stalking them online. <laughs> I mean, by having direct conversations. This brings me to step two, which would be what you want to be able to do is actually ask for your needs to be met. And you would do this by extending yourself just a little bit outside of the comfort zone or the norm. 
asking essentially for a slightly higher investment than what the person has currently been putting in. A really obvious example of this could be if you were in a position where you were communicating over text every few days, you may tell this person, I'm a big texter. I love texting and I really value consistency around text and would love for us to do that more often. And so by asking for more of an investment in a way that's a slight stretch out of the comfort zone, not only are you expressing interest in a healthy and balanced way, but you're also making sure that you're pushing somebody to take just one step forward um, to showing up and investing. Now, if you see the needle move, you would continue down this process until you reached a point of conclusion, right? Either this moves into a whole healthy dynamic where there's an actual reciprocity of the actions here, or you're communicating and you're seeing basically no investment increasing. And in that particular case, you would take a huge step back and realize that this is not worth my time. And in that case, if you'd like a little exercise to get out of it faster, you can actually write out all of the costs of staying with somebody in this situation if they're going to keep behaving and showing up in the way that they are. For example, if they're going to continuously breadcrumb. How does it make you feel? How does it affect your future dating life? How does it affect your other relationships, your ability to focus or concentrate on your goals or your dreams or show up at work? And you would write out all of the costs and then all of the benefits of actually leaving, actually departing, setting yourself free. And this can be a useful exercise to just reorient our emotional perspective away from this individual who may not be showing up in a way that we're worthy or deserving of. And in a way that actually may be chaining yourself to an unfair dynamic where there's a total lack of reciprocity. If you want to do a deeper dive into this, you can actually check out our How to Heal from a Breakup course fully for free for a limited time that can help you jumpstart, even if it's not a real breakup, it's just this kind of situationship, but you're having a hard time leaving. It goes deep into the mechanisms subconsciously of why this tends to take place and gives you some really powerful, actionable steps for what to do. I'm also in the platform down below three days a week. If you have questions for me, you can join in there for free for a limited time. You can ask me questions on a weekly basis or join any of our daily support groups with led with uh, facilitators and trained coaches, counselors um, who can actually show up and support you as well. Um, so we've got lots of support in there if you have any other extra questions. That is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this gave you some insight. Please subscribe to this channel if you're enjoying this and this platform. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.